Good morning, Mahjong players. I don't know if it's morning for you, but it's morning for me. I'm on my way to play Mahjong for my big Saturday group. And today, we actually have some good numbers. I'm so happy. We're going to have nine players today. We'll do a two tables of four and a floater. So that'll be nice. Everybody likes it when we have one player rotating in and out because then people can go to the bathroom and make a phone call or whatever. So hopefully it'll be a good day. And I just had a thought, if somebody drops in, we'll have 10. We'll have to do a table of four and two tables of three. That's fine though. There's all kinds of configurations you could do. And yeah, people just have to be flexible when you're a part of meetup, you gotta be flexible. Because you never know how many people are going to show up. Okay, anyway, so hopefully I will do well today. I actually did really well last week in my live game. I'm still not having luck, though, online. I don't know if there's a difference or if it's just pure luck or bad luck, as it were. Because online, I just seem, can't seem to win. It's been really rough. Anyway, it's not going to stop me though, because I love Mahjong. I'm going to play whether I win or lose. I really love the brain exercise, the challenge, the fun, the friends. It's worth it. Even if you lose, it's worth it. And online, it really, well, no, it does cost actually online because I have a VIP membership at Mahjong time and I have purchased chips. Anytime you lose, you lose those chips. So if you don't win, then eventually you're gonna have to buy more chips. But it's still worth it, I think. The, it's a great form of entertainment. I'm home safe and sound and having a good time. And my husband, he's a, he, um, he of course works full time and he's going to school part time and he's writing um, a series of science fiction novels. <laughs> so he's super busy. We maybe watch a uh, little TV together and of course we eat dinner together but other than that we're doing our own thing and so I need something to do hence Mahjong time go check it out if you haven't already it's I think it's the best it's the most lifelike I love the interface compared to others that I've seen so go and check it out you can play for free two hands a day about and that's if you lose both hands if you win of course you'll win chips which will allow you to play more so you can play for free. You don't have to buy a, a subscription. So go and check it out. Mahjongtime.com <coughs> And if you click, <laughs> excuse me, hold on. <coughs> I hate that when you get a little droplet at the back of your throat. <coughs> Especially when you're talking. Anyway, um, when you go to Mahjong Time, go to my website first and click on the Mahjong Time icon. That will really help out my channel. So I would appreciate that very much. All right, so on my way to Mahjong, I wanted to talk about events and prizes. So I am down to really just one event per year, and I'd like to do more, but my group is so small, I really don't know. I don't know about events with like eight people it just i don't know it just seems like it's a lot of work for not that many players even though the players who come will have a good time i just kind of like if i'm throwing a event i'd like it to be big you know 12 people minimum kind of a thing so anyway um the different events that i do are for mahjong are a new card party so I do that every, from now on, I think I'm gonna do it every April um, or May. It depends on the player base and what's good for them. But I'd like to do as close to the new card release as possible. So that's the first event uh, that's kind of top on my list. The other event that I haven't done for the last couple years and mainly because our membership has kind of, really the membership activity has kind of decreased for whatever reason um, I used to do a holiday party 
not a Christmas party uh, because we have both Jewish members and Christians. So I don't want to do it to be religious specific. So I try to keep it as a holiday party. And we do some kind of a white elephant gift exchange. So I've done that in the past and I may go ahead and do that again this year. No matter, well, maybe I'll put, I don't know, maybe I'll put an eight player minimum on there or something like that. And then of course I will charge $10 to play because I wanna have prizes which leads me to this topic. But um, other events that I have done in the past are tournaments, but I tell ya, I have had so many complaints about tournaments. I don't know what it is. I think it's the last time I gave a tournament, we had some players come and I think they were expecting, you know, a tournament at, you know, that maybe Hadassah would throw or maybe that Gladys Grad would throw at Mahjong Madness, <laughs> you know, 200 people or something, but no, this is just my little old meetup, so there's maybe, if I'm lucky, 16, which is fine, because that's, you know, I can handle that by myself, but anyway, so I think they were expecting a lot more people, and they ended up having to play, I think, at a table of three or something like that. There was something that these, some of these people, I think it was like three or four friends, who came and they were not happy with the way I set this up and they just complained and they were mean. I mean, right in front of everybody, it was not good. So I stopped doing tournaments. It just became such a source of stress for me. So that's why I gave up tournaments, but I would really love to do tournaments again. I just don't know, maybe, I mean, I even post the rules on the meetup site, but of course people don't read them. And I even read through the rules, but that's when you get the complaints. All right, so anyway, I really didn't want this to turn into a rant, and here I go with ranting. So sorry about that. All right, moving on. So new card party, holiday party, tournament, that's three events per year. I think that's pretty decent for a consistent membership. If you have any other events, I'd love to hear about them because I like offering different activities other than just playing Mahjong on a weekly basis. That's fun, of course, but having events, that's kind of fun too. I wonder if having um, a party maybe that's themed, some kind of a theme like I don't know, maybe for the first week of summer, for example, have, um, um, I don't know, a Hawaiian party where everybody wears a Hawaiian shirt and there's a prize for the best outfit or something like that. Maybe that'll be fun and people dress up, you know, like uh, maybe have a Halloween party where everyone wears costumes. I've never done anything like that, but I've seen photos on Facebook for that so maybe that would be fun I should try that this year if you've done anything like that write it in the comment section because I would love to see what other people have done and to see how it goes over I mean most of my members are pretty mature you know in their golden years or better and um, I don't know if they're gonna want to dress up in a theme it is a lot it could be a lot of trouble I suppose but that would be up to them I guess Maybe I could say something like you get half price entry if you dress up and that way it'll give people an option. Oh, well, anyway, tell me what you think about all that. Themed parties, maybe one a year. So I would have four parties per year. New card party, holiday party, a tournament, and a themed party. And then the theme would change every year. I'm gonna think on that. Maybe I'll gain some membership if I do parties. And right now, our main player base is American style. So it's mostly ladies. It's actually all ladies. I don't have any men in our group. But I'm trying to get a Cantonese style game going and I'm trying to get a reach game going in Canton. So if you live in North Georgia, like Cherokee County, go to Greater Atlanta Mahjong Meetup and 
come and play with me. I would love to get some Cantonese style and Japanese style games going. And men typically will play those styles more so than American style. I mean, I'd love to have men join us for American style. It just doesn't seem to happen very often for whatever reason. I don't know. Anyway, so I really wanted to share some prize ideas with you. If you lead events, tell me what you've done in the past. Just write it in the comment section below. Of course, I've been to many events and a lot of the prizes are donated. And what I do is I charge an entry fee and I use that money to buy the prizes. So I don't have time to go out and find people to donate prizes and it's not for charity or anything. So I don't know how any of that works. I would love to hear from any of you who have done that to let me know how you solicit for prizes for your events and if it's for charity and maybe that's the way you get people to donate if there's anything official that you need to do I mean do you have to fill out like a 501c3 form or anything like that I don't know I don't think I'm big enough to really do that kind of a thing I mean most of my parties are 16 players or less I have had a couple bigger than that but not by much so anyway, um, most of the prizes that I give are cash prizes, and then I usually have object-based prizes for first place and then um, a door prize. And I try to make them Mahjong related. So in the past, I've given away tablecloths, I've given away, um, let's see, I've given away racks, special racks and uh, mugs. I've given away bags, you know, like mahjong purses. So usually it's mahjong relay. Oh, and plants too. Like a bamboo plant for Lucky Bamboo. I've given away orchids. Those went over really well. So I try to keep it as close, closely, closely related to mahjong as possible. And of course we know that there are flowers in our mahjong tiles. So I do like a bamboo and an orchid. I guess you could do chrysanthemum, which I don't even know what that looks like. But So yeah, plants are good because those might run 15 bucks. And that's a pretty good price, I think. 15 to 20 bucks. But I wanted to share this idea that I had this morning while I was getting ready for Mahjong today. I wanted to put on a bangle. And I got for Christmas last year snap jewelry and I thought why not customize snap jewelry and give that as a prize it's actually pretty inexpensive although the custom pieces are a little more expensive so as soon as I get through this curve on my drive here I'm going to show you my bangle and then I'll tell you more about it okay here it is so it's just a little bangle and on the top, you see that little green? It says Gypsy Life, I believe, or Gypsy Soul. That's what it is, Gypsy Soul. My um, home base business is called Gypsy Computing. So when I saw that Gypsy Soul on there, I just snagged it. But anyway, the way that works is the bangle has a little hole in the middle and you order the snaps separately so you can see it's got like a nub and then it just snaps right in to the bangle and they have all kinds of pen pendants you know necklaces with pendants that you can snap these um, snaps in and then you have bracelets there's a leather strap I have that it's got three snaps on it so there are multi snap pieces that you can snap snaps in if that makes sense so it's very customizable and you can get I mean there are thousands of buttons or snaps that you can get to customize whatever piece of jewelry you're wearing I absolutely went crazy with my selection for Christmas so I've got uh, black snaps pink green blue purple I think that's it for now. Oh, and I made I custom made some 
Chinese kanjis. I have one for faith, hope, and love. And it's just black and white. So anytime I wear black, white, and gray, I wear those faith, hope, and love Chinese kanjis on my leather, black leather strap. I love that. And so the cool thing is that you can customize and it's kind of a saving on jewelry because you know bangles if you want to wear some kind of a theme you've got to buy a different kind of bangle or pendant for that theme but if you have snap jewelry all you do is change the snap and you wear the same jewelry so it's kind of a savings so I will put a link to snap jewelry below the video and when I get home if I remember I'll go to Etsy and show it to you so you can see what it's all about and that's where I get all my snaps and snap jewelry is on Etsy that's E-T-S-Y Etsy.com so uh, there are several um, vendors there but I have two favorites that I typically find good snaps for and I've had good luck on them fitting and I like the jewelry uh, that goes with it they seem to be pretty good quality so I thought why not do snap jewelry for prizes and then give them information about Etsy so they can go get some more once they have their piece that might be too expensive though I'm not sure would you like to win some kind of a bangle with snaps um, the thing is some people like gold and some people like silver most people these days I think wear silver and that's what the snap jewelry is it's pretty much all silver so I've switched all my jewelry to silver I still have gold from the past but it just seems like silver is more contemporary now so anyway that's what I wanted to talk about I can't wait to show you and I'll show you my collection so you can see how it all works I'll, I'll show you the strap and the pendant I didn't wear it today because I got you know I'm wearing um, floral and I think uh, the pendant would be kind of too much. I like wearing necklaces when I'm wearing solids. So anyhow, um, I need to go to the post office and I also need to get my nails done because I broke a nail. And then I'll go to Mahjong. So I have a lot to do this morning in a very short period of time. I will get back online on my way home and I'll let you know how the day went. Continue and then at the very end, I'll show you Etsy. Road. We just finished playing Mahjong. It went really well. We had nine players, but when the ninth player came, somebody went home. So, it worked out to be two full tables all day long, which was nice. And I had an up day again, so I think that losing streak, at least in live play, is broken. Thank goodness, because I'll tell you, that can be really discouraging. But I think, you know what I did for a little while, and it actually helped a little bit. If you're on a losing streak, try this and tell me what you think about it. I basically played consecutive run hands for a while I just couldn't do anything right and then I just started playing consecutive run every hand for a little while and then that streak just kind of worked itself out so give that a try and tell me if, it, if you think it works I'm gonna try it again if I find myself on a new another losing streak I'm gonna try the consecutive run treatment maybe that's what I'll call it the consecutive run treatment consecutive run protocol yeah, that's good. I like that. All right, so we had um, just one little sort of snafu today, and um, it's a, it's about new players, beginning beginners, and I just wondered if you run a group, how you handle when a beginner joins advanced players. I think it's good to welcome beginners because we all started there and it's an opportunity to give back but it is difficult sometimes to play at a table with the beginner because it is a very slow game so what do you think about that and how do you handle that in your groups do you have a beginner table 
See, here's the thing about a beginner table. If you put the beginners there at the table by themselves, first of all, they could be playing the game wrong and nobody would be there to correct them. Also, how are they gonna get better if they're not playing with better players? They'll continue to play slow because there won't be anybody there kind of pushing the game through nicely, of course. So I'd like to hear how you all handle that. I have never segregated players by skill level. I've always just welcomed them in the fold and then we do a player rotation. But even then, some of the advanced players do have a hard time with that. Um, so I don't know, I wonder, I wonder if there's a solution out there for this. Maybe the, maybe the player rotation should be Instead of every four games, you rotate every two. That's a lot of getting up and down though. Drive two so I don't know what the solution is actually. Tell me what you do in the comment section. Write it down and let's share some solutions. Okay, I gotta merge in, hold on. Okay. So that was the only thing. And then one of our ladies slipped and fell in the uh, restaurant. And that was, oh my goodness, she really fell hard. So you know who you are if you see this. I'm so sorry that happened and I hope you're okay. Goodness, that was not a, a good thing there. So mo I think, um, when you're in some of these restaurants with the floor, I think this is kind of one of those cement finished floors. And she was wearing these sandals that I think might have had a, a slick bottom. You gotta, when you're at these restaurants, you gotta wear some tread on your shoes so you don't slip and fall. Cause you know, in restaurants, sometimes there could be some spillage. And if you've got tread on your shoes, then uh, you might be okay. I wear, I'm wearing today um, Birkins, Birkenstocks, I think is what they're called. And they've got literally a tire tread on the bottom. I love that because I am surely not going to fall on those. All right, so I am on my way home. When I get home, I will get online and show you Etsy. I forgot to tell you that I mentioned the themed party to my friends and Mahjong today and actually their eyes kind of lit up a little bit. They started throwing out ideas of what they could wear. One person said, oh, how about a lei? You know, wear one of those Hawaiian leis. And then another lady said, what about if I wear a grass skirt? <laughs> I thought that was so funny. So I think that's going to be um, an interesting idea and I'm going to actually do it. So at the end of July, end of July, I think I'll do a, a Hawaiian party. Hawaiian party. I don't want to call it a luau because I'm not going to serve a pig. We could call it a, I don't know, an island. I'll have to think of some kind of clever name. Maybe I could do it every summer. Just kind of make it a tradition. Celebrate the summer. Celebrate summer. Mahjong party. How about that? That's not very clever, actually. All right, anyway, we'll see. So that'll be something to share with you come July, the end of July. Yeah, so that's, that's gonna be interesting. Thanks for the support. Give me some more ideas and I'll tell you what I try and whether or not it works. Gotta make Mahjong fun. More fun than it already is just by nature of being Mahjong. All right, I'm gonna go. We're going out to dinner tonight, so I need to focus on the road and get home. I just thought of another idea for the party, the summer party. I still don't know about the name, but I thought about a prize. Well, it's kind of a prize. It's already one that I already do. It's called Hand of the Day where you pick, usually I pick something out of the first hand that's won and I make that a special hand. For example, let's say somebody wins a year category 
and I'll say any hand with a white dragon in it is the hand of the day. So now for the summer party, I'm going to say any hand with the flower for summer. There are flowers that say S-U-M for summer. So if anybody wins with a summer tile, they'll get the hand of the day. And then of course that hand will travel. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think I like that idea. All right, so I just wanted to let you know that idea for a prize. I'd like to show you my snap jewelry collection. Here's the pendant. So it's got two snap holders and it's quite long actually and it's a bit heavy too so it lays really nicely. That's the back and that's the front. So I'll show you how to put the snaps in. Here's a charm bracelet and it's also kind of heavy so it really feels good on your wrist. And you can see it's got hearts. I like hearts. And it's got a little bit of bling. Can you see that bling? And then I showed you this earlier, just a little bangle. This is the leather strap. So I'll show you how that looks. And then these are my snaps. So I have, this is my black. I have a little owl. Isn't he cute? I liked it so much I got a pink one. I like owls. So when I wear these, I like to put the owl in the middle. And here's my green. And this is my gypsy, gypsy soul. And then I have two other greens. Here's my pink and I like the owl in the middle. So you can see how pretty they are. And then I'm a big fan of pink, so I have a lot of pink. And I love purple also. Pink, purple, green. And then here's the Japanese kanji. I don't remember which is which though. I would have to look it up. But it does say faith, hope, and love. I think this is faith, I think this is love, and I think this is hope. I might have to correct that. But I already showed you this one. You can just put any snap on it. And it just snaps on and off. Let me show you the strap. So sometimes I'll wear this when I wear black, white, and gray. So here we have faith, hope, and love. And then you can get different lengths. So there it is. That's the leather strap. And then if you wanna just do a different look, you just pull those off and then snap on a different set of snaps. a totally different look. Isn't that cool? So let me show you this one. We'll do the owl. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I kind of put it on. Oh, there you can see my pink owl it's really heavy it feels really nice on but you can put any of these on here there's some bling on that oh here's purple see how easy that is and look how cool this is with the necklace
pretty. That's my collection of snap jewelry. And I thought maybe I could make, upload some images regarding Mahjong, maybe some flower tiles or maybe even a joker tile and have buttons made. I think they're 10 bucks a piece though. So I'm gonna get online. I'll get online and show it to you. I'll show you the website next. Here's the Etsy website. I wanna show you my two favorite stores. This is the Snap Exchange. If you scroll down, you can see all the charms and there is a search feature. So you can type whatever theme that you're interested in and it'll filter their collection so that you can pick and choose what you want. You can also upload images for custom charms. And then you can get bracelets and leather straps for the charms. This is the other store I like, Snap Button Jewelry, and they have bracelets, they have necklaces, all kinds of interesting designs. And then you just add your charms to it to customize it. Check it out and let me know what you think. I am going to close out this vlog. Thank you for watching another day in the life of a Mahjong player. And between now and the next episode, may all your picks be keepers.